Hi, we will start chapter seven titled Work, Energy, and Energy Resources. As you, may, as you may recall, physics has a goal that is to understand fundamental laws and principles of physical objects and their interactions. The objects can be as large as stars and it can be as small as electrons. Before this chapter, you have learned kinematics, which deals with the motion of a single object and the simple dynamics, which explains why motions happen. Newton's three laws are the fundamental principles behind the concepts. In this chapter, we will continue to dig in the physics world and learn new fundamental laws and principles. Work and energy are the new tools we will use. In the domain of physics, work is a way to transfer energy between objects. And energy is the ability attached to one object that enables it to work. So as you can tell, work and energy are two very closely related concepts. In this video, we will formally define work and learn how to calculate a work done on an object. I will use this diagram to explain a work. So here is a box. And on this box, there's a force applied. The force is a vector. It has its own direction and magnitude. The force is in Newtons. Assuming under the influence of the force, the box is moving from initial point to final point. So this box is making a displacement. And remember, displacement is also a vector. It has its own direction and its own magnitude. And the magnitude of displacement is called distance. So here, D is the distance, which is always positive. But remember, displacement is a vector, which in this case is pointing this way. In general, force and displacement are not necessarily in the same direction. And that's why we define an angle called theta between these two vectors. So if this is what's happening to an object, we can now define the work on this object by the force. So work, the symbol for work is W, and W is equal to force times distance times cosine function of the angle theta. Now remember, all three numbers here, F, D, theta, are positive. Force is here, F is the magnitude of the force, and D is the magnitude of displacement, and the angle theta is that this angle between these two uh, vectors. An angle can equal to between 0 and 180 degrees, including 0 and 180 degrees. So as you can tell that the work has a unit which is newtons times meters, and we define a new unit for work. It's called joules. Here are some examples of work. This is a long mower, and this person is pushing this mower to the right. He is applying force F on the mower, and this mower is moving by some distance, which is D. So clearly, mower is the object of interest, and there's a force applied on the mower. Of course, there's other forces, but we only consider the force by the person on the mower, which is F. Under the influence of the F, F, the mower is moving by D. So the force is doing work on the mower or you can say this person is doing work on the mower and the work done by this person by is equal to F times D times cosine angle theta. Another example if is this person holding a briefcase. And clearly here is we if we consider the brief briefcase as the object of interest, the force by this person on it is upward force because it's holding the briefcase. But this person is not moving at all. Briefcase is not moving as well. 
and that's why d is zero. If d is zero, you can easily figure out w has to be zero. So that's why there's no work done by this person on the briefcase if he's not moving at all. But even he's moving, even he's, mo he's moving because the force is upward and displacement is horizontal. So the angle between force and displacement is equal to 90 degrees. And we know cosine 90 is equal to zero. That's why the work done by this person on the briefcase is still zero. And the other two examples right here, the first one is if this person is holding the briefcase and climb the stairs. In this case, the work is not zero because the force is upward and displacement is along the incline. So the angle is somewhere between zero and, and 90 degrees and cosine function is a positive number. So you do have non-zero force, non-zero displacement, and you have a non-zero cosine function. That's why this is a work. And actually this work is positive. Another example is if you allow this briefcase move down and you can tell that during this moving down process, the force on the briefcase is upward by the string. But then this briefcase is making a movement that is downward. So there is a displacement or distance. But the angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees because force is upward and displacement is downward, just opposite. So the angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees. That's why we know cosine 180 is equal to negative one. So the work done by this force on this perfect case is negative work. And we will learn in other videos about what does it mean positive work and what does it mean negative work. But keep this in your mind. Work is a way to transfer energy and positive and negative work do have very different meaning in terms of transferring energy. Let's finish this video by using one example. So let's still use the lawn mower as example. If this mower is moving by 25.0 meters under the influence of the force of 75.0 newtons, and there's angle between the force and the displacement, which is 35 degrees below the horizontal. And let's solve how much work has been done by this person on the mower. So we start with the equation, but I suggest you always write the most related concept first. So the most related concept is work. We write this work. And then we write equation W is equal to F times D times cosine theta. And we know force has a magnitude of 75.0 newtons. And D is equal to 25.0 meters. The angle theta is 35.0 degrees. So all numbers that we need are provided. So here, all we have to do is just plug numbers into the above equation and solve for work. So work is equal to 75.0 times 25.0 and times cosine 35.0 degrees. The answer is 1535.9 joules. The other thing you have to consider is the significant figures. In this problem, you are given 75.0, which is three six figures, and 25.0, which is also three figures. But then angle here is 35 deg um, degrees, which is two six figures. So the answer always has the same six figures as the least six figure numbers. So that's why we have to use two six figures. And that's why the answer is supposed to be 1.5 times 10 to the third joules.
And this is the answer to this problem.